This is a really key point. Jim and I actually talked a bit about this. In the old days, the buyer told you what his motivations were. The buyer laid all his cards on the table. And it was almost his obligation to tell you what. Nowadays, the salesperson's obligation is to extract that information. And if you don't, you're going to fail. There, there's no two ways about it. You have to extract that purchase motivation from them. And if you don't know what motivates them to buy, you'll never be successful. Um, one of the examples I draw from here is uh, one of my best friends and my, and my first client, Barry Sanders. And for those of you who are football fans and familiar with the Detroit Lions, or God forbid if any of you are actually a, f a fan of the Detroit Lions, they stunk, and they stunk very, very badly uh, when Barry played. And it was frustrating because I also represented Emmett Smith, and you'd see we'd be doing these deals for Emmett left and right, big national deals. And we just couldn't get national deals for Barry. And it just didn't make any sense to me. And, and one day I was talking with the chief marketing officer of Visa, and, and unbeknownst to me at the time, but what I was doing was extracting purchase motivation from him. And, and I said, you know, what, what, is the, what, what am I doing wrong? You know, Barry should be, have just as many deals. And he said, he goes, you have to take the negatives that people think about Barry as a spokesperson and show them how it's an advantage. And I said, how do I do that? And he said, I don't know. That's, he goes, that's your job. You're the salesman. He goes, but that's what you have to do. That's what you're facing. So when I thought about the three big negatives with Barry, um, you know, it's pretty simple. The first one was that, you know, he was an unbelievably talented guy, but he was viewed as a regional guy, you know, in Detroit. He was viewed as a regional guy. Uh, I turned that around and said, hey, the great thing about Barry is he's universally loved. You're a Bears fan. Your Bears play him twice a year. You don't hate Barry the way you hate Lawrence Taylor. You love Barry because your team's going to win anyway, and you get to see Barry run for a couple great runs, so you don't have that animosity of the opposing teams that you have towards other players. The, the second thing about Barry was he never gets in trouble. Um, now probably more so than even then this was a concern um, but you know even back then no company CEO wants to spend a bunch of money on an athlete and then have it end up on the front pages that he hit his wife or he's a deadbeat dad or whatever it is. So I said here's a guy he's never going to get in trouble. He's your blue chip guy You'll never have a problem with him. Um, the, the third one was that companies like to plan in advance. Um, you you're as a company, you understand, you know, you don't want to make Super Bowl plans two weeks out. I could guarantee you with Barry Sanders that by the fourth week of the season, he would be available for your Super Bowl party. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is something that Emmett Smith or Peyton Manning and nobody else could guarantee. And, and what's amazing was all of a sudden, People started to get in on the Barry Sanders train, and, and uh, Nike did a big national ad with him, and then all of a sudden it just the floodgates opened, and people. So, so I was able to turn really the single biggest negative about him, which was that he was on a terrible team, into the thing that made him the most desirable spokesperson in football. Um, Fifteen years since he's been out of the game, Barry Sanders this year will do more in marketing than any current player, other than maybe Peyton Manning. Barry has two national commercials with Pepsi running right now, two national commercials with Nissan. He's the national spokesperson with TV commercial for Powerball. He's the, on the cover of Madden with national TV commercial there. He's got uh, four or five other ancillary sponsorships. He's a national spokesperson for Verizon. Um, and, and this is a guy who hasn't played football since 1998. So ultimately though, but the things that drive him, the things that I understood in purchase motivation at the sea level still drive him today. He's still every bit as desirable as an endorser as he was then because of the same reasons. So it, it was, at the time, I didn't realize I was doing it, but it was my ability to extract that purchase motivation from my buyer that enabled me to open up a floodgate of sales for a guy who you know, would have been mired in kind of this regional stereotype his entire career.